Hey there, my name is Brian. Uh, welcome back to the channel. As a reminder, we're interested here in accelerating the pace of cognitive evolution. Uh, specifically, we like to um, embody the ideas from these theories in somatic, artistic, and experiential technique. Overall, our intention is to unleash forces of healing, truth, fun, creativity, and freedom into our world. Um, today I'd like to explore how we can uh, leverage ideas specifically from the FOG behavioral model of motivation to uh, unleash more of these forces, uh, uh, liberating forces into our life. If that does sound interesting, I would invite you to like and subscribe, etc., etc. Uh, one, so you can stay involved in this project, but also so others who could benefit or be interested in this material would see it. And without further ado, I would like to just give a very brief amount of context. So BJ Fogg is a researcher, a behavioral research uh, designer from Stanford. Um, I find the, his research very interesting. There's a book called Tiny Habits that I'm, uh, that I'm kind of drawing a lot on here. Um, if you want to check that out, it'll be linked in the description. Specifically, the Fogg behavioral model shows that there are kind of three nearly universal elements of behavior that must uh, of motivation that must uh, converge at the same time for any behavior to occur, which I think is a pretty interesting day or interesting idea that we could linger over, but um, just like allowing the model to unfold a little bit. Um, the three elements are motivation, ability, and prompt. Uh, when a behavior does not occur, at least one of those three elements is missing. And so that's the, the idea. Okay, so uh, the first part I want to talk about is this idea um, that uh, Fogg brings up early about motivation and mindset, uh, like kind of reframing a mindset. And so the idea is that there just, it seems that there's intrinsically a drive to evolve and improve something. For example, I'm specifically interested in uh, leveraging um, cognitive evolution and development into uh, improved understanding of healing. So that's a drive that I have. And there's various behaviors that I uh, need to, to implement to make that happen. Um, you know, however, for you, it could be something like eating healthier, making more time for art or activism, committing to self-care, um, something just generally be more creative or productive, create more security, connection and love in your relationship, uh, maybe with partners, kids, family, friends, etc., and, and just better overall in whatever way makes most sense in your context. Um, so I'm going to challenge you now a few minutes into this article is, or into this uh, video, excuse me, is there anything that's coming to mind to you right now that you could apply this, this behavior model to? Um, something you want to learn, practice, etc. right now, or the inverse, something you'd like to do less of. I do a lot of work in the addiction field. People want to do less of things. That's perfectly great as well. There's things you want to do less of. Cool. But using that as the context for the rest of the video. Um, Okay, but you know, just there is something interesting. There is a disconnect in uh, in many people. We can see it in rising, rising mental health challenges, sleeplessness, stress. Um, you might hear it. Uh, you know, there's data uh, showcasing this. Just anecdotally, in my practice, I see this. Um, this disconnect between what uh, folks want to do and what's actually happening on. Like, what what's the explanation of that? And the behavior model has an explanation for that. And what I think makes it distinctive is that um, for the most part, people tend to blame lack of motivation on themselves. There's maybe a cultural message of it's your fault or, you know, um, you, you should exercise more, but you aren't doing it. Shame on you. A kind of uh, shaming as a low resolu resolution motivator. Um, Fogg kind of challenges this idea in a very interesting, provocative way. He says, um, we are not the problem. Our approach to change is it's a design flaw, not a personal flaw. Um, and he also says, offers this, people change best by feeling good, not bad. Um, another principle is take a behavior you want, make it very tiny, find where it fits in your life and nurture its growth. And if you want to create long-term change, it's best to start small. And so those are the kind of mindset principles um, in this first part. Now I just want to jump into, in the, in the next part of this, um, in this video, in the next half of this video, talking about the elements of behavior, which um, Fogg makes this kind of fun little acronym, B, which is behavior equals map, motivation, ability, prompt. 
Uh, and for fog, behavior happens when motivation, ability, and prompt converge at the same moment. And um, yeah, so what I find very interesting about this model is Fogg is suggesting, BJ Fogg is suggesting that rather than relying on motivation um, to kind of drop that and explore the space of ability and prompts, optimizing our, our ability to do a behavior. Um, I'm trying a, a concrete example that I'm working on right now is fiction writing, um, optimizing my ability to write more creatively. Um, instead of optimizing for my motivation, optimizing for you know my ability to do it, the skills, tools, um, resources I have, um, and then also focusing on prompts, things that are reminding me to do to write fiction. He spends more time there than trying to you know hack my motivation. So let's break these each down. One, ability. Um, just going to run through a few definitional things. Um, is your Ability just stands for your capacity to do the behavior. Uh, Fogg says there's three paths to increasing uh, ability. You can either train, train yourself, give yourself more skills, more ability to do the target behavior, whatever that is for you. Actually, that's the hardest path. Um, you could also give someone a tool or resource that makes it easier. Um, for example, let's think about cooking. You're trying to cook more at home. A cookbook makes it easier to do. Very simple. Uh, a tool for meal prepping makes it easier to do. A tool or resource. So thinking about, you know, with your context, your unique context, how what's a tool that could help you in some way. And then this is kind of the 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 bread and butter, for lack of a better term, of the the, the Fogg's ideas is make it easier. Scale scale things back until it becomes easier and easier. You need less capacity. Um, you could also replace ability with simplicity. Um, by focusing, uh, making things simpler, you make it easier. You increase your ability. Key insight here. Key, key, key thing to think about. Um, simplicity is a function of your scarcest resource. Um, so some resources we think of are time, money, physical effort, mental effort, sometimes called spoons. One of those four. If you don't have 10 minutes, a 10 minute behavior isn't simple. Um, if you don't have the mental energy to do something, then it's not simple. Um, and so we're kind of stripping out the normative component. Um, especially I work with some folks who work with treatment resistant depression. Simplic simplicity for them may look different than simplicity for folks in a different context, right? Um, because of kind of, you know, bi biological uh, uh, fa failure modes that are going on with um, m uh, motivation for them. Okay. Um, so the nice thing is, is that, you know, if something isn't working systemically, we can use this chain of time, money, physical or mental effort and figure out what is making this behavior hard to do. And we can brainstorm around that. Um, OK. Um, checking our time. We're doing pretty good. Um, OK, so prompt is the next one. So we've talked about ability. Prompt is the next thing we look at. This is essentially the cue to do our behavior. Um, it's the third element in the, uh, uh, it's the next element, I should say, in the behavior model. Um, you need this to happen uh, for any target behavior to, ha to, to happen according to Fogg. I think it's an interesting idea. There's internal or external prompts that kind of inspire us to do a behavior, for lack of a term, trigger, cue, uh, etc. Uh, call to action something like this. Um, it's a very, very interesting idea. Um, I'm just going to talk about motivation real quick and then we'll end on integration and, and recipes. Um, okay, so motivation. This is, I found this fascinating. There's three core motivators, sensation, anticipation, and belonging. Um, each has two sides. Sensation being pleasure, pain, anticipation being hope and fear, and belonging being acceptance slash rejection. By the way, uh, no need to, I know there's a lot of ideas here. I'm putting this all in the description. So if you want to uh, look at any of these or read along, um, go ahead and do that. Um, okay, so how can we actually leverage these ideas to do something? And um, how do we integrate this into our lives? How do we make this kind of 10, 15 minutes you've spent watching this actually um, matter? Um, and Fogg talks about this as install a tiny habit into your life um, that is 
related to something you actually care about that, that, that that's dri that's driving you um, <clears throat> the context of this video that we talked about earlier um, essentially it's a tiny habit is something you do once a day that takes less than 30 seconds and that requires little effort here's five examples after I brush I will floss one tooth for someone who's trying to floss more after I pour my morning coffee I will open my journal after I pee in my toilet I will do two push-ups after I sit down on the train, I will take, take three deep breaths. After I put my head on the pillow, I will think of one good thing from the day. Um, there's essentially two parts. The recipe, we can call these recipe, tiny habit recipes. Um, uh, after I um, do something, this is very crucial, looking at our existing anch routines as anchors and resources, things we're already doing. I mentioned five of them. I'm going to um, start the coffee maker, turn on the shower, put on my glasses, tie my shoes, feed the dog, pick up my car keys. There's a litany of things here. Thinking of things that are already installed unconsciously that you do with no problem and using that as a scaffolding to, um, to install something new. I think it's a very, very fascinating idea. Very powerful. Um, using this really a lot in my fiction writing. I have meditation habits installed and it makes a lot of sense to get in, into writing after that for me, and it's been going going uh, very, very well for a while now. Um, and then the new habit, I will, is the second part. So after I, litany of um, behavioral anchors that you have, I will, um, you know, I've mentioned a few like flossing, reading, or doing push-ups. Thing is, is um, I want to just mention this right now. This uh, self insight is something that really is important to come first. I think in this, or, or to not necessarily come first, but to as an ongoing process. This is a powerful thing. We're kind of installing and deleting algorithms for, from our life. So understanding what these algorithms are doing, if there's something we're getting rid of, and why we're installing this new algorithm. Like what about for me, like expressing myself in fiction is very rewarding, but uh, and I won't get into my own kind of uh, self insight here. But on on your own, um, think about that, and um, I'll make videos in the future about um, our core beliefs and our values. I think that can be really helpful on this topic. Um, in the meantime, I want to thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in uh, learning more about this, like the, the video in the future on core beliefs, or just accelerating the pace of your cognitive evolution, or, or uh, applying ideas from psychology, philosophy, art into your own uh, life art, um, experience, embodiment of being a human being, I uh, hope you'll join us on this channel. In the meantime, have an uh, awesome day. Thanks so much for being here.